today I want to talk about syncretic metaphysics. Another way of saying that is everything is everything. And since I'm going to be talking in metaphors, I would hope that you guys would comment on this video, whether you understood it or you didn't understand it, because I'm going to speak indirect, but have a direct point in how you can relate it to your actual spiritual journey. So the first thing that I want to talk about is spiritual practice and very simple spiritual practice would be imagination. We must imagine. So to understand how we utilize imagination in spiritual practice, we look at the signs. Now, signs are multi-layered and multi-level in our understanding. But in syn syncretic metaphysics, we can look at our normal signs and relate it to our spiritual signs. And I'll give you an example. We utilize signs to get to our destination. That is practical, normal. But in spirituality practice, we must utilize the imagined signs to reach our destiny. Now, destiny etymology is taken from the Latin word destinare. And like a GPS destination, your destiny must be programmed. But how do you program your destiny, your destiny? You program your destiny through honoring the directions. There are four directions and you must give honor to those directions the same way as if you're trying to get from Massachusetts to Atlanta your sense of direction is going to aid you getting there. If you didn't have the direction to get from north to south, east to west, you couldn't actually live in this world because you wouldn't know. So spiritually, you can relate that to giving honor to the four corners or the four directions. And you may not see these energies and entities. This is why you must imagine and it's very and it's very simple. But if you just wish for things in the world, that's just the same way as wishing to go to the store. As bad as you wish to go to the store, if you don't get your ass up and utilize your direction, you'll never get to the store. And it's very simple to just get up and go to the store. And it's very simple to manifest if you just simply imagine the energies to the north. Now, these energies can either aid you, protect you or guide you. The energies to the south, these energies can aid you, protect you or guide you. The energies to the west, these energies will protect you, aid you and guide you. The energies to the east, these energies will protect you, aid you and guide you. Oh, giving Ashe to the north, south, east and west will improve your spiritual practice by a thousand percent the same way as utilizing going south will improve your ability to make it to the store a thousand percent one if that makes sense two if that doesn't it, it i'm still like not hitting uh, it doesn't make any sense to you because it's very important for me to have some form of cognizance between me and you as far as the spiritual understanding. And it's not and it's not hard. But you might feel like spirituality is not real. You might feel like you're not able to progress in your spiritual progression, but you're not dealing with the signs in the direction and giving Ashe. So you open up the four directions you're not always traveling. So you're not always going to the store. So you don't always have to give Ashe to the direction. But in the case of you leaving in any space, if ever you leave your house, you're utilizing direction and you're giving Ashe to that sense of direction because now you know how to get from point A to point B. Spiritually, you have to do the same thing. 
And once you begin to do that same thing, you're easily able to really navigate the spiritual realms on your own. And you don't and you don't have to be lost. You don't have to be stagnant. But if you do not imagine that you are in, in partaking in a spiritual practice, having a specific spiritual intention. And utilizing that intention through. Careful observation. Why do I say careful observation? Because if you're driving Right. We got to be practical before we can be spiritual because we're being syncretic. We're being syncretic metaphysicians. We're looking at our everyday life and relating it to our spiritual journey. You must do that or else you're going to look at somebody else's life and try to put on their shoes and they wear a size 13 and you wear a size 10, meaning that it don't fit. And although you can wear it, you're still going to be clunking around here, not actually making spiritual progress. So why do I say have a specific observational eye in reference to your spiritual journey and spiritual metaphysical practices? Well, if you were driving, you would need to pay attention to the sign to say, get off at the exit fair. If even if even if you knew it at the back of the head, you will always rely on the sign to get off at the exit. Always exit 132. That's the sign that I need to get off to go home. You're observing of the sign. If you don't observe the sign, you will drive on the highway, you'll miss your exit and you'll stay on the highway forever until you observe the sign and get off. Meaning that your spiritual intention has a beginning and an ending. If you don't know exactly what you want, you don't even know exactly where you're going. Therefore, your destiny is up for grabs. It's vague. It's not really the same way as you saying, well, I'm going to a random ass store, a vague ass store, and then putting that in your GPS. Your GPS will never, ever be able to compute a vague address. It needs something specific. So when you do metaphysical practices and you really want to work your intention, you, you open up the four directions. You have a clear intention. You sow that intention. You give thanks because no, you're no longer space traveling. You give thanks and, and then you go back to your regular life. That's a very simple way to start off your spiritual journey and get to a specific point. Don't be afraid to be exactly sure on what you want to manifest. And that's how you're going to tell if it works or not. Because if you vague and you don't actually know, you're not going to actually get nowhere. So to be reasonable, to be rational in reference to your metaphysical work is kind of how you want to do this shit. Because if you want to go, uh, uh, you know, you'll never understand how your spirits work with you if you being unreasonable and irrational in reference to what you can actually manifest and handle. Because you are a vessel and energy has to be slowly entered into that vessel because too much energy, too fast, that vessel can explode. We've seen it happen too many times. So when you're in the realms of spiritual manifestation, really have a spirit specific goal that you can begin to work on open up the open up the energy portals set your intention close the energy portals and then observe the signs very simple stuff and if you're just going to do that do it right don't be a bitch about it don't be afraid about it don't be a don't be don't be mad at not getting shit that you want but you didn't set no specific clear intention of exactly what you want. The same way is if you want to go to the store, and you don't know what store you go to and you don't go and you don't get up and go to the store. Then you can't be mad at nobody but yourself that the store is still there. What you want is available. Now, are you going to incorporate your ancestors, your nature spirits, your fairy spirits, your guides, your soul, your energy into a specific purpose so you can be guided and led and be completely observant of the signs to get to a specific destination or a specific destiny? Your destiny is not some random vague occurrence that's just going to happen one day. You're going to be like, oh, my God, I entered into my destiny. Your destiny starts at the beginning of your metaphysical practice. You must know 
the end at the beginning or else you're wasting your fucking time. And if you don't know, this is the investigation point. So what we're dealing with is a waning moon. And this is a perfect time for times where we just don't fucking know. Because what is blocking us from knowing is our illusions and our sense of knowing, which we don't fucking know. We don't necessarily know shit. We got to really start to imagine and work with these spiritual energies. And my last point that I want to talk about is the cup of love. Now, the cup of love is a spiritual message that was given to me about um, it was about plates. And I'll explain it's I'm saying it's the cup of love, but really it's the plate of love. The plate of love is a very interesting message. And spirit was telling me, all right, you got thoughts, emotions, feelings, and that would be like food, right? That's the food. So you can be eating hors d'oeuvres, fucking caviar, surf and turf, lobster tails. Some niggas eat Little Caesars. Some niggas eat McDonald's. Some niggas eat Subway. Some niggas eat vegan. So when you talk about thoughts, emotions, and feelings, they run the gamut from expensive to ridiculous to thought provoking to just random shit. And it don't really matter. So in order to digest or to eat any thought, emotion, or feeling, you need an actual plate. That plate is actual love. And love is not a thought, emotion, or a feeling. Love is a condition. Love is a condition that exists all thoughts, emotions, and feelings. So if a person is in love with you, that doesn't mean that they're always going to have positive and, 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 and good thoughts. It's not to say that they're going to always latch on to you and always think positive about you because it's just, it's just not possible. It's too many thoughts. It's too many meals. Even if you eat steak, every single day sometimes you might eat some ramen noodles sometimes you might just you know sometimes you might get mad sometimes you get sad as a human being you get into a relationship that's not going to remove the your ability to get sad and mad those thoughts those foods are still going to be there but if you choose love you're choosing a condition and i think people don't fully understand that it's a fixed condition that allows for the food to be digested. It allows you, if you want to have Little Caesars, if you want to have um, whatever, you can have it on a specific plate. Now, say, for instance, if you don't have a plate, imagine if you're thinking, having emotions, successes, failures, but you don't have the condition of love, then you're really at a loss because how the fuck are you going to digest your food? How are you going to eat your food? Right. You're not going to be able to eat your food for real. You're going to be having them to put everything on your fucking hand. You only going to be able to eat sandwiches. You only going to be able to eat pizza when it comes to fine dining and things of that nature. You're not going to have a plate, meaning that you're not going to have a condition. You can cook the best meal in the world. But if you don't have a specific condition to house that particular thought or emotion, then you're not going to be able to enjoy it thoroughly. So you always want to have the condition of love. So whatever instant you find yourself in, you can thoroughly enjoy it. Spiritual people won't tell you this. They'll invade your mind with thoughts, emotions and feelings and not get to the actual condition for you to plate that shit. So as I was thinking about it, spirit said spirit showed me a food plate then it went into a collection plate. So sometimes your plate spirit was like a plate don't actually mean you supposed to have food on it. A plate, your love and your condition of love is actually your wealth. And I said, spirit, what the fuck is you talking about now to confirm it? I told y'all spirit always confirms things through etymology. And so after that point, I looked up plate etymology and it literally means something that you put money on. A plate is actually a coin. So love is actually your coin. Love is actually your wealth. Love is actually your condition over all things. So whatever thoughts and emotions that you have, and if you do not have the condition of love, love for self, love for your soul, love for your ancestors, love for your guides, which then gives you the overfilling cup to then give love to other people. See, if you don't love your spiritual self, you can't actually love nobody. If you don't love your spiritual practice, you can't actually love nobody. Because if you don't have love for your soul, if you don't have love for your spiritual practice, 
by default, you're going to need a nigga to help you pay your bills. By default, you're going to need a woman to help you balance your shit out. By default. When you deal with your ancestors thoroughly, righteously, like not on some bullshit, not for not not naming myself a spiritual name and having a spiritual Instagram page, but not having a, a sincere relationship with your ancestors, your nature spirits and your fairy spirits, and your grandma, and your grandpa and all of that shit. And, and just kind of like putting that shit to the wayside. But you want to actually have a relationship with somebody. Well, you don't have the, the non-physical relationship down pat, which is going to provide you all the sustenance that you need, all the wisdom that you actually need, because you only live in a 24 hour period. And then in that 24 hour period, are you living towards your goals, your destiny, your destination, a clear destiny? And you're not going to be able to do that. Why are you not going to be able to that? Because you don't have the condition, the fixed condition to say that I can't I can actually manifest something. I can't, you can't actually manifest nothing, right? Because you don't have that support. You don't have that sturdiness to know that no matter what I put on this plate, I'll be able to digest it. I'll be able to hold it. I'll be able to find the value. So I'm just hoping that you can prioritize the feeling of love over or not even the feeling of love, the condition of love over the feelings and the illusions and the thoughts and the emotions that are associated with random everyday activity and start to generate your own personal spiritual condition based upon your spiritual practice, your imagination and things working out for you and then being able to either transfer that or teach that or create some level of satisfaction in the true spiritual reality that most people don't really open their minds to because it's not actually there. But if you're a syncretic metaphysic metaphysician, then everything is everything. Everything you do is spiritual. You just have to begin to relate and connect the dots. So peace.